In this video, we're going to look at finding the domain of a function. Domain tells us what values are allowed or not allowed to be put into a function for the variable. To determine the domain, it's often easier to ask what is or is not allowed given the type of problem or function we're looking at. For example, this first function, f of x, is equal to 3x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 6. Notice we're working with a fraction with a numerator and denominator. We can ask ourselves, what is not allowed to happen in a fraction? In a fraction, we are not allowed to have the denominator equal 0. This would make the function undefined or the fraction undefined. So let's find out what values would make the denominator 0, and those would be the values that are not allowed to be part of the domain. We can quickly solve this by factoring to x plus 3 times x minus 2 is not equal to 0, and then set each factor not equal to 0. x plus 3 is not equal to 0, and x minus 2 is not equal to 0. Solve quickly by subtracting 3, and we find x is not equal to negative 3, and add 2 to find out that x is not equal to 2. These two values describe our domain. x is not equal to negative 3 and not equal to 2. This means we can use any value for x in this function, and it will work and give us a defined rational expression. However, we cannot use negative 3 or 2. Let's look at a different example. In this second example, we have f of x equals 3x squared minus x. In this function, notice we're squaring, we're multiplying by 3, and we're subtracting. We can ask ourselves, with these functions of squaring, multiplying, and subtracting, is there anything that's not allowed to happen when we do that? Is there any type of number we cannot square? We can square anything. Is there any type of number we cannot multiply by 3? We can multiply anything by 3. Is there any type of number we cannot subtract? We can subtract any numbers, and we will always get real solutions. This isn't like the first example where we are not allowed to have 0 in the denominator. In this problem, in this function, anything goes, really. When we're allowed to use any type of number, we will say the domain is all real numbers. In other words, there are no type of number that would make this function undefined. This is different than the third example, though, where f of x, or the function, is equal to the square root of 2x minus 3. With square root, there is something that is not allowed to happen. There is a type of number we are not allowed to take the square root of. We cannot take the square root of a negative number, which means whatever's inside the square root, the 2x minus 3, has to be non-negative or greater than or equal to 0. So if we know that 2x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0 to keep it from being negative, we can solve quickly by adding 3 giving us 2x is greater than or equal to 3, and then finally dividing by 2, giving us x is greater than or equal to 3 halves. This means our domain, or values we can plug in for x in this function, have to be values greater than or equal to 3 halves to make the function defined. If we use a number smaller than 3 halves, we would get an imaginary number or a non-real solution, which is not allowed to happen. So the way we calculate the domain of a function, which is what we're doing with these three examples, finding the domain, is we ask ourselves what is and is not allowed given the problem we're working with. Some common domain issues is denominators of fractions cannot be equal to 0. Also, whatever's under the radical must be non-negative or greater than or equal to 0. Keeping this in mind, we can come up with equations or inequalities we can solve to determine the domain.